Hello, I'm Reswan at Footprint to Wings, here to talk to you about how to set up a zero carbon coaching clinic. First, let me put on my zero carbon coaching cap. A zero carbon coaching clinic is basically an interactive space for you and your community to explore all the options to get to zero carbon. Here's the layout. You're going to need a big space for this, like an auditorium or a field. You start at one end, you work your way to the other. At the starting point, you get the rules of the game. The rules are simple. In the race to zero carbon, the first state to achieve a net zero carbon economy with the best quality of life wins. You're the player, your state is your team as a whole, and between you, the player, and the whole state are a number of specialized teams. So anything, your household, corporation, club, it's a specialized team. So back to the start, you get the rules of the game, and then you face the switch. That's where we ask you, are you ready to make a switch? Are you ready to go all the way to zero carbon? If you're not, you check your mindset. And if you are, you check your emissions and see just how far you need to go to get to zero. The start is where players would take the pledge to race to zero carbon. By the way, you don't have to wait for a zero carbon coaching clinic. You can go to our website and pledge right now. Go to fp2w.org, click the Start Here tab, and you'll be on your way. Now it is totally all right to walk through the entire uh, clinic and then come back and face that question again. You do have to face the question though, and it's a difficult question to face. Climate therapists will be standing by to help you out there. The mindset section is really about finding your intrinsic motivation and also grappling with the feelings of guilt and doom that come up when people talk about the uh, threat of climate change. So don't skip it. It's not a fluffy little thing. It's one of the key parts of coaching the race to zero carbon. Climate therapists will be standing by. Check emissions. This is the part, right at the beginning, where you want to know, well, how far do I have to go to get to zero carbon? And also, what's my ranking? Who's in the lead? Which state, and you re recall, this is a 50-state race, your state is your team as a whole, which state is in the lead? Who's in the top 10? Um, what's the national average? Who's bringing up the rear? The states are ranked by emissions per person, not by total emissions. If they were ranked by total emissions, Texas would be the worst state. However, Texas has a high population, so we take the total emissions, divide it by the population, and you get emissions per person. And that basically gives you a rate that shows you how effective a state is at meeting the needs of its citizens with a certain carbon budget. There's a lot of insight that comes from ranking states this way. For one thing, it triggers useful questions, like, why is New York in the lead? Why isn't some other state doing better? This ranking system is a great coaching tool and a key part of our scoreboard. Speaking of which, join the scoreboard committee. Also, we have a talk, scoring the race to zero carbon. It's about one hour, including Q&A. Contact us for information. Check emissions part two. Now you know your rank, but what you want to know is what specifically your state is doing and how far it has to go to get to zero carbon. So you zoom in on your state, and here's where you take a look at your state's energy profile. Now let's zoom in a little bit closer so we can see the whole energy supply field. And the first thing we notice is that the state of New Jersey is about 20% decarbonized. This means 80% of the energy supply field is dominated by fossil fuels. So basically, we're at the 20-yard line, and we want to know, can we go all the way to zero? To zero and beyond. Of course, this is a metaphor. Obviously, the field is not going to be measured in yards. It's going to be in units of power or energy. And clearly, we're not going to run straight down the field like it's a football game. We're going to simultaneously tackle different parts of the field and bring each of them to zero carbon. 
What's cool about breaking the field down into fuel type is that you start to see the type of solutions you'll need and also the scale. So for example, motor gasoline. That's obviously uh, gonna be about cars and it's 20% of our field. So solutions start to immediately suggest themselves. Um, we could drive less, bike, take public transit. You know, that's gonna whittle down the field size. But now to zero, we'd need to electrify the cars and switch to uh, zero carbon power plants to drive them. Jet fuel, flight, there's no easy substitute for that. Here's, by the way, why the race is really to net zero carbon. Because if you still wanna fly or do other things that burn fossil fuels, that could be okay, but you just need to offset that carbon. And there are many ways to do that. For example, direct air capture of carbon. So we will get to that once we head to the solutions area of the coaching clinic. Before we head over to the solutions, let's recap. To recap, we're at the 20 yard line with fossils controlling 80% of the field. Now, there's a controversy here in the decarbonized part of the field. A lot of people don't like nuclear. They wanna shut it down. But if they did, that would put us back to the four yard line. Now my advice as a zero carbon coach is that this is a race to zero carbon. First, go to the end of the field, get all the way to zero carbon, decarbonize, defossilize. Once you've succeeded in doing that, by all means, feel free to come back and get rid of the nuclear. But you do have to first show us the zero. Get to zero. Check your solutions. Once you've checked your emissions, you are ready to go on and start looking at solutions. When it comes to solutions, there are many different ways to slice the field. We've broken it into energy supply side plays, demand side plays, and meta beyond zero plays. But wait! Coaching the race to zero carbon is a privilege and responsibility that demands commitment to a high standard of excellence. Are you ready to run a zero carbon coaching clinic? Are you ready to be a zero carbon coach? Take the coach's pledge. Uphold the player's rights and the coaching code of conduct. Earn this cap. You've got to approach this clinic like a zero carbon coach. Holistically, creatively, strategically, systematically, with discipline. This is not an eco fair. There are no vendors allowed in the clinic. If you want vendors, you have to have them off to one side, maybe on the periphery. This is a sacred space, a focused space to bring clarity to a difficult challenge, develop problem solving skills, and come up with brilliant collective game plans. Begin with the end game in mind. Why are we doing this? Why are we sending a bunch of people through a zero carbon coaching clinic? It's because we want folks to be exposed to all the information and get a real sense of the game. And you're gonna give all the players a playbook as they go through that they can mark up with their favorite plays and they can put together a portfolio. Now at the end, you want them to bring their playbook to the scoring station where you check if all of their plays add up to zero. Note to the scoreboard committee, we're gonna wanna do the playbook as an app so people's choice from this clinic and others throughout the state are automatically logged and aggregated using a ranked choice algorithm, of course. You see, this is part of a participatory process, a collective decision-making exercise. The clinic is where everyone gets familiar with all the plays, with each other, and with talking about the plays. Out of this process, we're gonna develop a plan that everyone understands and actually wants to carry out. Energy supply side plays. In an actual zero carbon coaching clinic, you'd get a lot more detail on each of the plays. The actual clinic is about a day long, a weekend long, a whole week. It's intense, right? Now this video, just a quick overview, fasten your seat belts, here we go. First stop, fossils. Key plays include banning fracking, blocking pipelines, divestment, shareholder action, gasoline tax, carbon fee and dividend, and carbon capture and sequestration. Now, in a zero carbon coaching clinic, 
Uh, you don't just list the plays. You show the relationships between them. Get people thinking strategically. Banning fracking and blocking pipelines are classic defense plays. They don't stand alone. You have to pair them with other plays if you want to win the game. Like, if you block fossil energy here, you're going to need to replace that lost energy by bringing renewables and nuclear online here. Or demand side, you might be thinking we're defense, we're the X, and the corporations and oil companies are offense, so they're the O, right? And these evil corporations want to lay down a pipeline, and here we are, good citizens, blocking it. And if we just shut them down, it's game over for fossils. The problem is that the pipeline is just the delivery system, and what's being delivered is fossil fuel, and who is that fuel being delivered to? Us. We're the receivers. So we're here blocking the pipes, playing defense, and we're back here waving our hands saying, hey, send me some more of that cheap gas, I'm wide open. So we're part of the offense, and we're sending mixed messages to oil companies. How much of a mixed message? New Jersey gets 30% of its energy from natural gas. Some of that's for electricity, some of it's for heating. You've just got to put as much, if not more, effort into demand side plays as you do blocking plays. If you're coaching the fossil section, you're going to be sending people over to the demand side area where they can look at electrifying their cars and retrofitting their homes. Heads up, these plays come with the question of who's going to pay for this and how that will lead our players to the finance plays. You might be feeling confused right now. Don't panic. If this was an actual coaching clinic, you would be able to take your time, go back and forth um, between stations, and you'd see a lot of the same plays from different perspectives. There's a lot of overlap and cross-referencing. Banning and blocking plays do have value in slowing down oil companies and raising their cost of doing business. However, if you aren't reducing your demand, and if you in fact do just want to keep the pipelines and the fracking out of your part of the world, then it's not a mixed message you're sending, you're just doing a straight up NIMBY play. NIMBY stands for not in my backyard, and it refers to when people don't want to propose development anywhere near them. NIMBY is a big factor in the race to zero carbon, probably a deciding factor for most plays. Zero Carbon coaches have to keep that NIMBY coefficient in mind. Now, if you're still using the product, you're saying we want the gas. We just don't want the fracking infrastructure here, right? So uh, somebody else has to do the fracking for you to have that gas. So like we've passed a ban on fracking in New Jersey, but one third of our state's energy comes from natural gas. So that means we're happy to take the gas they frack in Pennsylvania and Ohio. You guys keep fracking. Thank you very much. Oh, and we don't want the waste either, all that frack waste. So you keep the frack waste, Ohio. Thanks again. Anyway, that does come across as kind of entitled. Note on scoring. Each state is scored for consumption of energy, not production. So even if Ohio is doing the fracking, if New Jersey is consuming that gas, those emissions are added to New Jersey's score. So, demand side plays are where you're going to win or lose this game. And demand side plays mean you have to spend money on retrofitting your home, you know, switching from gas to geothermal or electric heating. And who's got that kind of money? Now, we already mentioned a few of the fossil finance plays. The most important one is the carbon fee and dividend play. As you recall, we had our oil and gas companies over here producing the gas and we're over here receiving the gas. It's not really offense-defense, it's producer-consumer, and we're all offenders here. So, carbon fee and dividend. Here's how it works. The producers get charged a fee for fossil fuel at the source. Produce more, pay more. What happens to the fee? Where does the money go? Well, all of it gets distributed to American households on an equal basis all the consumers get a cut. So we all get money. That makes this a basic income play as well. So now what happens? Well, the producers had to pay a fee to produce gas. So they're gonna raise the price to cover their cost. And meanwhile, you, the consumer, have extra money. So now you could just turn around and use that extra money to buy that more expensive gas 
and then you just break even and nothing changes. But what's more likely is that you're going to say, hey, wait a minute, that gas is expensive and I've got this cash. So you know what? I'm going to spend it on a home retrofit, make my home cozier and more energy efficient, and then I don't need to buy as much gas. And then the producer is going to say, oh my gosh, this gas production is costing me and people are buying less of it. So I'm going to phase out the gas. Mm. Carbon fee and dividend creates a predictable carbon price that sends a clear market signal, which will lead to a zero carbon economy. Heads up, the carbon fee and dividend play is in motion. It requires passing laws. The specialized team working to make this happen is Citizens Climate Lobby. You should join them. They probably have a chapter in your town. Uh, they are a grassroots organization dedicated to this one play. Carbon fee and dividend is one of the most important plays in the playbook, and Citizens Climate Lobby is one of the most effective, inclusive, specialized teams in the race to zero carbon. For more information, check out their website, citizensclimatelobby.org.